Okay, we're gonna read the song that the um, Oompa Loompas are singing. So remember, um, Veruca Salt went down the chute down to the incinerator and an incinerator is a thing that burns the trash. So her parents are worried about her, but Willy Wonka says that he thinks it only gets turned on every other day. So these are the, it says from far away down the corridor came the beating of the drums. Then the singing began. Varuka Salt sang the Oompa Loopas. Varuka Salt, the little brute, has just gone down the garbage chute. As we very rightly thought that in a case like this we ought to see the thing completely through, we've polished off her parents too. Down goes Varuka down the drain, and here perhaps we should explain that she will meet as she descends a rather different set of friends. To those that she has left behind, these won't be nearly so refined. A fish head, for example, cut this morning from a halibut. Hello, good morning, how do you do? How nice to meet you, how are you? And then a little further down, a mass of others gather round. A bacon rind, some rancid lard, a loaf of bread gone stale and hard. A steak that nobody could chew, an oyster from that oyster stew. Some liver were so old and gray, one smelled it from a mile away. A rotten nut, a reeky pear, a thing the cat left on the stair. And lots of other things as well, each with a rather horrid smell. These are Veruca's newfound friends that she will meet as she descends, and this is the price she has to pay for going so very far astray. But now, my dear, we think you might be wondering, is it really right that every single bit of blame of all that scolding and the shame should fall upon Veruca Salt? Is she the only one at fault? For though she's spoiled and dreadfully so, a girl can't spoil herself, you know. Who spoiled her then? Ah, who indeed? Her pan who pandered to her every need, who turned her into such a brat, who all the culprits, who did that? Alas, you didn't needn't look so far to find out who the sinners are. They are, and this is very sad. Her loving parents, mom and dad, and that is why we're glad they fell into the garbage chute as well. Oh my goodness gracious, Mr. Wonka doesn't like little bratty girls, does he? Okay, so now we'll go to chapter 25, The Great Glass Elevator. Oh, remember, there's a whole book we'll have to read on that. So it says, I've never seen anything like it, cried Mr. Wonka. The children are disappearing like rabbits, but you mustn't worry about it. They'll all come out in the wash. Mr. Wonka looked at the little group that stood beside him in the corridor. There were only two children left now, Mike TV and Charlie Bucket. And there were three grown-ups, Mr. and Mrs. TV and Grandpa Joe. So shall we move on, Mr. Wonka asked. Oh, yes, cried Charlie and Grandpa Joe both together. My feet are getting tired, said Mike TV. I want to watch television. If you're tired, then we better take the elevator, said Mr. Wonka. It's over here. Come in. Here we go. He skipped across the passage to a pair of double doors. The doors did open. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The two children and the grown-ups went in. Now then, cried Mr. Wonka, which button shall we press first? Take your pick. Charlie stared at him in astonishment. 